Hi, Dr. Peterson. Uh, I've been wanting to ask you this uh, for a while now since I started watching your lectures. Um, after I started reading uh, Nietzsche's Beyond Good and Evil, uh, I came upon a paragraph in his uh, chapter on scholars that really, uh, really bothered me, and it actually bothers me to this day. Uh, he, he talked about this kind of person like they were uh, just a mirror. Uh, like they stretched, he said, every part of their skin basically to allow every new piece of information that they took on and that all they ever were was just an instrument. They were just a mirror on reflecting what they had learned, never actually having generated anything on their own. And it's, it's bothered me because I, I feel like in a way it sort of, like it's, it's, it's impacted my identity a lot because I, I, I don't know, how are you supposed to create something, you know, so. Okay, well that's, okay, that, that's a really good question. I mean, Nietzsche is often classed with the existentialists, right? And so one of the tenets of existentialism, there's two real tenets of existentialism. There's more, but obviously we're oversimplifying. But one is that life is a problem. It isn't because there's something wrong with you. It's that life is a problem. And so that's often contrasted with the Freudian view, which is that if you have a problem, it's because something went wrong during your development. The existentialist said, no, no, it's like, life is a problem, make no mistake about it. And that, the purpose of, the purpose of scholarship is in some sense to solve that problem. And so for Nietzsche, like he said, all truths are bloody truths to me. And what he meant by that was that if an idea didn't incarnate itself in you and transform your perceptions and your actions, then you were merely possessed by the idea. You were merely a spokesperson for the idea. Or you could say that the idea possessed you. You're a puppet for the idea. It's not you. It's the idea is in you and it has you. You haven't taken the idea and incorporated it with you and made it part of your life. And so, there's a romanticism that's associated with that, right? That's the passionate scholar, the person for whom ideas are not merely... They're not merely, what would you call, abstracted representations that can be tossed about as if they're commodities. They're, 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 more, like per, they're more like personalities. That might be another way of thinking about it. And so, if you're... If, if those ideas are compelling, then you don't... Like one thing I learned a long time ago, and I think this is probably relevant. You know, when I was a kid, I liked to argue. And I liked to win arguments or, or, or lose them, although I liked winning them a lot better. But I didn't really mind so much what the content of the argument was. You know, I, I, I could engage in it like a sparring match, and it was in some sense to establish dominance, right, to establish intellectual dominance. I quit doing that when I was in my mid-twenties, because I thought that that was too shallow an approach to the ideas. They, they're not commodities of that sort. They're, they're, they have tendrils that reach down into the living. That's the right way to think about it. And so Nietzsche's criticism of scholars, and he did this a lot, was that they were bloodless. You know, they didn't, they were full of performative contradictions. That's another way of thinking about it. They'd say one thing and do another because their intellect was completely dissociated from their, from their actions. And he, he, he thought that was a very bad idea. And I think that that's a good criticism. I think it is a bad idea. I also think it makes for an extraordinarily boring lecturer. You know, because you can tell if you're listening to someone whether the ideas that you're hearing are merely being passed through the person as if they're being memorized, say, or whether they're part of the dynamic core of the person. And if they're part of the dynamic core of the person, then they're almost always engaging and gripping. And so, he wasn't a fan of bloodless scholars. And I think that's correct because one of the things that I see, it's not a good idea to have ideas possess you. It, unless you know what the ideas are up to, and lots of people are possessed by ideas rather than possessing them. And that, what that means is they haven't taken the ideas and integrated them into their own being. They haven't, it's like an incarnation in a sense, they haven't incarnated the ideas in, in embodied form. And, and so they're incomplete. 
You know, Nietzsche also in Thus Spake Zarathustra, when Zarathustra comes down the mountain, he sees a bunch of people gathered around a famous individual, I think maybe a scholar, but it doesn't really matter. And when Zarathustra goes and looks at the person, all he sees is a little tiny midget with a gigantic ear. And so he's a hyper-specialist, right? And so he has a pretty impressive ear, but he's only this big. And that was Nietzsche's imagistic commentary on the danger of hyper-specialization and also on the danger of adulation for hyper-specialization and and because he thought about it as a kind of deformity now Nietzsche was a pretty harsh guy but um, but he did address the issue of the relationship between intellectual knowledge and, and action because for Nietzsche those things are not to be separated in some sense so yeah, so maybe, I don't know why it, maybe it bothered you. Like, it's hard to say why it bothered you. It might have bothered you because it sort of undermined the idea of scholar. But the other possibility, and this isn't an accusation, because obviously I don't know anything about you, but it might also be that it struck a chord, you know, and that maybe you were doubtful or questioning how tightly associated your intellectual endeavor was with your actual character and your practice. So that's another possibility. I mean, that's a really good thing to think about because generally speaking, that integration is, is very much lacking. People are a lot smarter and fluid with their ideas than they are ethical and consistent and characterized by integrity. So, yeah.